Hey, this is Cork from electricbikereview.com. I wanted to talk a little bit about unsprung weight because we've been having a conversation about full suspension electric bikes, ones with hub motors and ones with mid-drive systems. So you can imagine the rear end of the bike has you know, more or less weight in it. If there's a hub motor, there's weight in, in the wheel and in that arm versus a mid-drive where the motor is mounted to the frame, usually at the bottom bracket, and that weight is sprung, meaning that when you go over bumps and stuff, the whole weight of the bike, more weight is, is on springs as you go over stuff. So how does that play into traction? Well, I wanted to do like a little example to kind of show this, but I really think it has to do with momentum because we're talking about mass here and the velocity or rather mass times velocity equals momentum. So let's say that we've got uh, a heavier object, this pocket knife here, you know, it takes um, more time because you've got momentum at play here for it to recover, right? So let's look at this. Let's look at this bike lock right here, right? It's a spring. See how quickly it, it rebounds like that? Let's pretend that this is the rear wheel of a bicycle and it's being, it's going up and down like this because it's full suspension and you're hitting rocks and stuff on the trail and it can rebound pretty quickly, right? Like this. Now, if I add a little bit of mass to that wheel, I add some unsprung weight. This over here, this is sprung weight because see the spring is, is over here. Now we're gonna add unsprung weight. I'm gonna tape this right, right here and we're gonna look at how that responds. Okay, so I've taped that up. So it's like a little bit slower, do you see that? And in fact, do you see it actually bouncing down here? That's because for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And what's happening is it's going down, the momentum is like, whoa, and then, it, and then it goes back and forth like this because of that extra mass. So that's unsprung weight. So when you talk about a, you know, a bike that has more unsprung weight, what you're dealing with is, is this. You've got a wheel that's potentially bouncing around. And in fact, because it takes energy and pressure to push the wheel up to begin with, that's actually adding more stress and strain to your tire, to your tube, to your rim, and to the spokes because energy has to go through all of those things to get to that hub motor to be like, go up, go up, right? So really, ideally, you want just super lightweight, as, as little weight as possible, as little mass as possible in your, your wheels or in that unsprung portion of your bike. It's not to say that bikes with hub motors are bad. They still work great. And in fact, I like that hub motors tend to be pretty quiet. They operate independently of your pedaling system. So you're pedaling along you can switch gears, you can pedal at any cadence you want, the motor is still just going to be doing its thing, right? And that's a good feeling. So it's not a bad thing. In fact, a lot of times they're more affordable, um, they're easier on your chain and your gears and stuff, but you do deal with more unsprung weight and that's what happens, right? So I just wanted to clarify um, to, to help people understand because this seems to come up a lot. Um, and I just think, you know, these bikes designs offer different characteristics is all. See you back at the site. <laughs>